Hey guys, welcome to my video series on my new 3 inch uh, race drone. Uh, in this first video we're going to have a quick look at an overall of the parts that I've chose, chosen to, to select for this build. Uh, and we're going to have a good look at the frame. Then over the, the videos we're then going to have a look at each component as I then install it in the quad and any modifications or anything I find on the components. Okay, so let's first go through what I've chosen for the build and why I've chosen it. Pretty much everything you see here has come from a Chinese supplier, AliExpress or Banggood basically, and I've pretty much bought every single thing that is on the table when it's come up on, on sale, and everything on the table as it stands now owes me $110 Australian. So some of these items I've got very, very careful. Uh, I've bought very, very luckily because they've been on run out. I've got them very cheaply and other things I would like to change, but I've already got them lying around. So I'm going to use them. So, all right, let's first take a bit of an in-depth look at all the parts that I've chosen. Okay, so the first thing is, is the frame itself. The frame itself is a copy of a QAV X3. It was purchased off AlliExpress. They're now calling this frame uh, a big head frame. Uh, I think I paid $14 Australian for this delivered. The next thing we're going to look at is the flight controller I've chosen. Now, it is an F1 flight controller. Yes, I do know there's F3s and F4s and omnibuses out, and this is probably one of the things that I might upgrade later, but I do have it lying around, and it is crazy cheap. Uh, I bought this when Banggood were running these out. Uh, I think this was $17 delivered to the door, and I bought three or four of them. So far, they've been awesome. They've got the inbuilt OSD. They've got all the functionality. They're great. Uh, just they are a little bit cumbersome to use because of the switches and they don't also have the onboard memory for data logging that the new F3s and F4 have. But we've got it, we'll roll with it. Next thing is a RacerStar um, ESC, all-in-one ESC. It's probably the first time I've ever used a all-in-one ESC as opposed to using um, individual ESC, so that's going to be a bit interesting to see how it goes. chose that for this particular build because of the space. And I think once I depopulate all the wires, I think it's actually going to work out a bit uh, lighter. They do have 20mm uh, spacing hole versions of the flight control and the ESC, but this frame doesn't have 20mm hole spacings. It would be good if it did. I mean, you could always go ahead and drill them if you really wanted to. That would save a little bit of weight, but they are a little bit more expensive again. So the whole idea with this was to build a stupid ch cheap quad just to see how good it could possibly be. Now the ESC I paid $28 for delivered, um, we'll go from there. Next is the Racer Star motors, again these are a Banggood motor, very first time I'm ever using something from a cheap Chinese supplier, I've always bought sort of at least uh, uh, RCX motors, they've been fantastic, but I thought just for one build I will try something. Now they were again $28 delivered for the set. These are the BR1306, and I've bought them in the 4000 KV version, just because I wanted to try it on 3-cell. Uh, I will also run this on 4-cell to see if they burn out, and that way I'll let you guys know. But to start with, I thought I'd try uh, the 4000 KV just to get the, the motor speed up a little bit, and we'll just see if that's good or bad or not. So. The next thing is the props. The props came with the frame. They're just a cheap China 3030R four blade, don't know how good they're going to be. I do have some really nice race craft props to change it out with later, but to start with we'll go with the super cheapies. Uh, here is a camera uh, mount that I've decided to go ahead and print and design, uh, and that's to go with the TX-03. Now I've got a couple of camera options we can go for, so we're either going to go for a TX-03 with a built-in uh, transmitter incredibly lightweight they actually perform pretty well for what they are they're nowhere near as good as a sony sensor but they're lightweight easy to use um, so that's where i'm going to start i may end up going back to these uh, that's also a hs 1177m uh, and i do have a separate 600 milliwatt transmitter for that so uh, what else is on the table uh, okay some random uh, standoffs those sorts of things some different screws the screws that came in the motor 
I'm running mine off of 433. So this is a Brotronics full range 433 uh, receiver. Uh, that's quite expensive and I haven't included that in the price because I already have one of those lying around and I'm sure you guys aren't gonna go for a 433, you probably go for FR Sky uh, along those lines. Now I've also got a little beeper here which I purchased. Now I've got that so I can hook that to the flight control so I can tell my battery condition if I use the TXO3 because it's obviously not going to have an on-screen display. Uh, what else is lying around on the table? That's about it. I've just got a, a second-hand XT30. Uh, that's about all the parts you're going to need to buy for this. All right, well, let's have a little bit more of an in-depth look at the frame itself. All right, let's have a more in-depth look at the frame itself and a few modifications that I might make to the frame for, for my setup, basically. Okay, so. The frame itself is an X-frame. Now this is the first time I'm going to be using an X-frame. Most of my other quadcopters have always sort of followed that traditional H-frame design. Uh, so it's the first time I'm going to be having something with camera above the flight control setup. Um, okay, so let's have a good look. So the first thing you're probably going to want to know is what the weight of the frame is going to be. Okay, so we're looking at 38.1 grams. Not too bad. Now, next thing is, let's have a look at the thickness of the carbon fiber. It is two millimeters thick. Okay, so the hole spacing from the center point to the center point is a 125 mil even though this quad is listed as a 130mm quad. The actual holes themselves for your, your motor spacing are 2mm wide, so you're going to get M2 uh, screws in there, and they extend from 14mm to the externals and 6mm. So that should give you a pretty good re size for your, your different size of motors. If you want to run an 18 class motor or an 11 class motor or a 13 class motor, they basically all should work. Okay, let's look at maybe some of the, the build quality on this on this quad. Now, when I've assembled the quad, one of the things that I really liked about this whole thing is they've really included some excellent quality fittings. The Chinese manufacturers of these hex um, fittings that they've supplied, not a single one has rounded out. That's been fantastic. The knurled aluminium uh, standoffs were a really nice bonus in this kit. They were absolutely beautiful, again, none of them stripped, really easy to work with, very easy to hold when you were tightening the screws, so that was a really nice bonus. And the actual quality of the carbon fibre itself seems very, very strong, considering it is only 2mm thick, uh, and you can see some lamination, so it's probably not the best quality carbon fibre, but for the, the, the $14 I paid for the whole kit delivered to the door, you can't really complain about that. I did mention before that it does have the old traditional um, spacing for the ESCs and the battery is meant to be under slung so there is going to be no protection for the battery but I think I might 3D print something for the ba um, for a battery cover when I'm done. One thing I have done is I've actually mocked up this frame before I've gone ahead and started these videos so I can make sure everything fits is I've actually gone ahead and countersunk these holes and that'll be apparent when I go ahead and basically assemble it for you. Okay Let's have a quick look at how this frame is meant to be used. Here I've got a HS1177M camera, and the idea is that your camera is meant to sit in here. Realistically, it's probably meant to be used with a, a traditional HS1177 or a run cam, and the idea is that the screws go in from the side, and that gives you your nice you know, position for your camera, nice and solid. Obviously, the M series doesn't have that. The holes on the side are designed that you're going to poke your antenna out for your video transmitter and then your antenna is going to come up, whichever decide, whether you decide to use a clover leaf or dipole or whatever, it doesn't matter. But one of the really nice features of this style of frame, even though it is such a small quad, because they've built upwards, that gives you the ability to bolt on a HD cam, so something like a, a Mobius Mini or a Mobius or a Run Cam, any of those things are going to fit really nicely. You've got a nice little strap under here, a little bit of foam tape on there, whatever you want to do, and it's going to hold it nice and tight. The only thing is there's going to be absolutely zero protection for that camera. 
uh, so it's probably going to get damaged in crashes, but I guess that's why you buy a $50 camera and you don't sling a GoPro off most things. Okay, now I'm going to be using the tiny little all-in-one TX-03 ear chain camera. So realistically, I'm not going to be using any of this. So let's have a quick look at that. Why would you ask that I would delete this whole top section of the quadcopter I've just bought? 25 grams. So that leaves a total frame weight at a meagre 12.7 grams. So that's a massive weight saving uh, and going from having a full size camera, this whole mount, a complete massive uh, cloverleaf style antenna, a traditional transmitter, it's probably going to save more than 50 grams out of this build. So it's going to be incredibly lightweight. Uh, as we all know, the lighter we get things, the faster they go and the more efficient they are. So the whole idea was to try and build something as cheap and as fast as possible. So this is pretty much the way we're going to start going about it. And what I'm going to do for my camera mount instead is I'm basically, as we're stacking our ESC and our flight control, I'm basically going to stack this unit on top. And that's going to stack up there. And then I'm just going to make some small loops as a basic protection for the camera. Look, I know the cloverleaf is probably going to get beaten down within the first two or three crashes. I totally understand that. So I might either divert it 90 degrees backwards to try and save it, or I don't mind running a, a little dipole antenna. So I might just go ahead and build a, a tiny little dipole antenna for it. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so a final few notes on the frame that you get uh, when you order it from AliExpress. It does come with one complete set of propellers, which is just basically gonna be enough for you to test it the first time and it's gonna flip over and they're gonna break. So you're gonna need to get yourself some others. It did come with this ginormous battery strap which basically is just way too long. It's just a total piece of junk, so don't even worry about that. Make sure you get yourself a couple of spare um, uh, Velcros because, yeah, way too long the one that came with it. And there was absolutely no kind of standoff hardware. So make sure you get yourself like either a nylon kit or if you want to use some kind of standoffs for, for spacing out your, um, your ESC and your flight control, you are going to need something there. All right, that's it for this installment. The next installment, we're going to be looking at the ESC. We're going to go ahead and depopulate it, do some um, weights, and let's see how we're going to go ahead and stack those things up. Thanks very much for watching the videos, and stay tuned.